Hey, it's Vince Del Monte, the founder of the Seven Figure Mastermind here. I wanna break down the seven deadly sins that I see new and veteran entrepreneurs make, robbing them of their ability to grow their business. Do you know what sin means? Let me know if you know the definition of sin in the comments below. It's actually from the world of archery. And when you take a shot, if you don't hit the target you're aiming for, that's called sin. And what sin means is missing the mark. So I want you to understand that as we go through these seven different sins, these are areas in your life that you may be falling short of. Don't let this make you feel guilty, but let it inspire you to say, hey, I wanna sin less in this area of my life. Sin number one is ego, which stands for edging God out. Or in other words, edging greatness out. Not allowing greatness to come through in your life because of allowing yourself to say the two most dangerous words in the English language. Do you know what those two dangerous words are? I know. The second you say, I know that, your brain switches off to the permanent off position and you stop being able to absorb and learn. And in business, ego creeps in when, I'll give you an example, you join a new business coaching program and the business coach is teaching material that you recognize and you say, oh, I know that, I know that. And what I wanna challenge you to start rethinking is do you really know it? And I learned this from a mentor of mine named Eben Pagan and he talks about the three levels of learning. There's level zero, level one, and level two. Level zero learning is when you've heard something but you have nothing to show for it. Okay, level one learning is when you have some habits from that piece of knowledge. Level two learning is when those habits have compounded consistently over time and you have a transformation to show for it. All right, that's what the ultimate learning level is, level two. So when you're in a business coaching program, always ask yourself, even if the material looks familiar, don't say, oh, I know that because now you've prevented yourself from learning and say, do I really know that? Or have I just heard it before? So don't let your ego get the best of you and you'll find that your ego is designed actually to keep you safe and prevent you from being embarrassed or getting into an uncomfortable position. So that's why your brain says, I know that, because it's protecting you from uncomfortable change that can improve your life. The second deadly sin is pride. And this one is a tough one to swallow. And what pride says, I should be further along. We live in this iPhone, iPad, iTunes, iMac culture. It's I, 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 all of our little cool toys. And we just always are constantly thinking about me, me, me. And what happens when we're always thinking about our own needs, we go into this image management mode where we're always just trying to protect ourselves from what other people might think or projecting something that we might not be. And it really prevents us from learning and from growing. And I'm gonna give you an acronym around the word pride that you will never, never forget. Five letters you will never, never forget. And I learned this from our head coach, Corby Waters. It goes like this. Please remember ignorance destroys everything. So when you're ignorant, you fail to create opportunities for yourself to maybe gain an alternative perspective or to try something different or to relook at something that you thought maybe uh, I need to try this again. And you really just rob yourself of potential. So I wanna encourage you to swallow your pride even if the source of information is coming from somebody uh, that might appear inferior to you or not as good looking or somebody who's brand new or somebody might not be as educated or as cool. What can you learn? Don't let your pride get the best of you. The third deadly sin is sloth. Now this is just good old fashioned laziness. This is the guy that has an idea that he wants to start a business, he's curious about making more money, but you know, as Gary Vaynerchuk would call him, he's a entrepreneur. he's not a true entrepreneur who's willing to do the work, all right? And sloth in business, where it really shows up is when people get started, they see some quick wins, 
They might see some quick clients, some quick engagement, but then things start to steady off. And what happens is they start facing roadblocks and things start getting tougher than they first were when they started. And what happens when they hit their first roadblock? They quit and they don't understand that to get to the next level, it's not bouncing to something new and starting over. It's going right through the middle. I call it the valley of despair. All right, and you go right through this valley of despair and you come out on the other side with this awareness that, oh, I don't need to seek new when the going gets tough. I need to seek better. I need to become better. I'll give you one more funny analogy. It's like the single guy in his 40s who's been dating the same girl, like different girls, but the same type of girl for the past 10 years. Every time you see him, he's with the same type of looking girl, same dark hair, same long legs, same accent, same personality. I'm like, what happened to the last one? And what happened was that when they got into their first fight, he quit and he bounced to something new. And this is the guy that will be single the rest of his life. In business, in the gym, it's all the same. It's the guy that's bouncing from training program to training program, from diet to diet. It's the guy that's bouncing from every different business model under the sun and he's got no success because he doesn't understand the secret is not new, the secret is always better and going right through the middle. The next deadly sin is wrath, all right? And uh, wrath means anger, very powerful emotion. And uh, when we experience wrath in business, it typically comes from entrepreneurs whose expectations are let down and they get really upset. And sometimes, you know, rightfully so, people put a lot of time and effort into launches and, you know, uh, you know investing in the coaching programs and expecting a certain return in a certain time frame. But what happens is they get really emotional and they become very reactive and they lose their sense of vision. And what happens is because they're so, so wrapped up in what they hoped would happen is they start pointing the finger and they start blaming. Blaming, 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 oh, this coaching program sucks, this coach is no good. When you blame, what happens is you t give away your power because you're saying that you're responsible for this. I'm not responsible. And the definition of responsibility is the ability to respond. So by blaming other people, of course you're gonna stay stuck and of course you're gonna stay angry because you haven't said, hey, what did I have control of that I could change? And I want to really caution you because we see so many people self-sabotage because of expectations that don't get met, they don't have a long-term vision for the future, and they just get way too reactive instead of embracing the situation, owning it, and then looking at it from the lens of, hey, what could we do better? How could I approach this differently? And embrace becoming a victor. A victor is somebody who's determined to always win, find a solution, become resourceful, be resilient, be relentless, and that's the person that's ultimately going to succeed. Don't be a victim. Be a victor. and Don't let anger get the best of you. The fifth deadly sin is envy, and envy is another level of jealousy. So jealousy is when you want something somebody else has. You want their car, you want the city that they live in. That's jealousy. That's pretty normal to have some of that stirring up inside of us, but envy is when you don't even want the person that you're jealous of to have what they have. Like you don't want them to have the city they live in. You don't want them to have the beautiful wife and the beautiful family. You wish it was taken from them. Well, it's a sin because you're missing what you've been blessed with. And you're missing that what you have has been given to you based on how well you've managed your talents, your resources, your opportunities, your income, and you're judging somebody else without having full context of how they became successful. 
and it's really unhealthy and it can rob you of your joy, it can rob you of your peace, it can rob you of your happiness, and you can go through your whole life looking at what you don't have when you've got so many blessings right there in front of you if you just opened your dang eyes. And I wanna just, just give you a strong urge to just look around you and make a list of three things you're grateful for today. And be grateful for your health. Be grateful for the ability to go outside and run and to breathe oxygen and to have freedom. We've got all this crazy stuff going on in the world. No one's taking away your freedom to decide what you focus on, right? You can focus on all the bad news in the world, but you can also focus on all the good going on in the world right now too. Nobody's taking away that freedom. Just a word of encouragement for you. Don't let that sin get the best of you because it'll rob you of all the blessings currently in your life right now. The sixth deadly sin is lust. Now we know that lust in the sexual world is a very intense desire, a desire for someone. And in business, it would be a lust for more, right? You're never satisfied. You always want more money, more growth. And I think one of the most important questions that a man asks himself is, when is enough? It is normal to have a desire, but to what point? To a point where you abandon your commitment to your, your first spouse, to your only spouse? If you don't decide what is enough, then you will go on a chase the rest of your life for a little bit more, a little bit more. And there's a saying in business that the rich line is always moving. And what that means is your first desire might be $10,000 months to have a six-figure business and then you want to do $30,000 months to bring it to a $300,000 a year business and then you want to have a seven-figure business and then you want a $5 million business and then you want a $10 million business. The rich line is always freaking moving and not knowing when enough is enough can get you into a lot of trouble. It can keep you chasing, chasing, chasing to a point where you never experience fulfillment and satisfaction because you think that more is gonna make you happier. But you have to make a decision before you start, what is enough? So that way, when we hit it, everything else can be a bonus. And what we give back, and we can operate from a place of abundance. Or else, I'm telling you right now, you will be on a rat race that just keeps turning and turning and turning. You'll get to the end of your life and you'll still wonder, how come I still don't feel like I have enough? When really true fulfillment comes from knowing that you're being a good steward and manager of the gifts that you've been given from God and that you are utilizing them to impact people. And if you're being blessed, it's because you're just doing a better and better job. But it's not because you need more, it's because you're being blessed more. Seventh deadly sin is gluttony. All right, so what's gluttony? Fitness people, you're gonna love this one. It's consuming junk calories and just hoarding food, whether it's fast food, processed food, pretty much nutrient void food. And you become a glutton for this food that gives you that quick dopamine hit and that gives you that instant you know, stress reduction and creates that immediate satisfaction. Oh, I just need those cookies, I need that sugar. It tastes good in the moment, it doesn't feel good a few hours later. Where this shows up in business is people's craving to buy more programs, hiring different mentors, and they're just consuming, 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 but they're not implementing. And the value is not in the information but in the implementation of that information which leads to a transformation. So let me ask you a question. Are you a consumer or are you a creator? And I wanna just caution you that you don't need a lot of information to become successful. You don't need to consume a lot. The value is in getting a bit of information that you need right now. Let's say for example, you're trying to improve your sales and maybe you buy just one sales course or you hire a coach or join a coaching program that specializes in helping you with your sales, and that's all you focus on all year, you don't consume anything else, at the end of the year, your closing rate goes up from 30% to 70%, you now have way more money in your bank account to reinvest into your business because you strategically 
consumed, and then use that information to actually get results. So that's the sin. The sin is consuming without implementing, and I want you to take information and create from it, implement from it, and produce a result from it before consuming something else, all right? And it goes right back to fitness and nutrition. When you consume good quality food, you don't need a lot because good quality food has got fiber and micronutrients and all of our uh, different macronutrients like carbs and proteins and fats, the good ones that give us long lasting energy. All right, so that's what we're looking for. I hope that makes a lot of sense and super helpful for you. I hope you enjoyed that video. Let me know what your favorite sin was below. Which one resonated to you? Which one do you wanna work on? And uh, if you haven't subscribed to my channel yet, do that right now. Turn on post notifications so you're informed first when I drop new videos and be sure to like it and share it with anybody that you know would love this content. I'll see you next time.